Bellator fight master. The quarterfinals are underway and the stakes ratchet up as each camp has a fighter in the game. The preliminaries are moving into the quarterfinals. Frank, man, you had an amazing round in the preliminary round. I have three fighters that have made it through and better than every other team. And I'm ecstatic. I think my guys are just gonna beat everybody. I love Frank. He'll let you know how it feels and he will not hold his tongue at all. He beat the number two seed. He should go to number two seed. This <laughs> guy. I get what he's saying. There's no way cut stays at number two. Well, the biggest sticking point is Joe wants cuts like rank number two or number one or something, which is just ridiculous. I want him to be able to pick his own destiny now. That's Dude, nobody fight. cares what you want. If you guys have you such a problem and thinks he's so terrible, uh -oh, leave Randy. his ass there and see what happens. We have Randy doing I'm that. Ah, yeah. I think that's how it sits. Veteran Joe Diesel Riggs holds on to the number one spot. I love it. I love it. So what happened is Randy Couture said, this is what it's going to be. And everyone else said, okay. The first welterweight to step into the cage will be number two seed, Cole Williams. We love a good Williams fight. Let's go, Cole Williams. Well, they, they seeded you second. You've got your choice. Go pick a fight. That's he said they round. seated you second. Randy stole the fucking whole show and said, this is what's happening. We're down to eight fighters left. The first time around, I was fifth. Now I'm jumped up to second. It's a great feeling being seated up there. All right, let's do it. At this point, there's not too many easy picks to go with. Any fight you pick, you got to go in there and, and be smart and respect what he does well. Look for openings. So any choice is pretty, pretty hard. Who's he going to pick? Barnes. Ah. Uh, we're fighting again. Uh, I mean, you all yeah, right, buddy. buddy. Uh, Barnes didn't get it. He said, Barnes. He said, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> well, you know, he, he didn't know where they're seated. He didn't, I don't think he realizes that he's picking the number three seated guy in the show. Barnes and, is a headache. He picks Barnes. And uh, so it's going to be an interesting fight. But I'm rooting for Barnes. I'll say I'm that. I'm not going to let you step on me. I like Barnes. Me over. I'm a fan Watch of his out. story and his disposition. Company. But uh, if I were to put money, I would say, man, right? Williams Randy scores a takedown, really lays on top of him. Height advantage is going to Williams, but I'll tell you what, in terms of reach, it's not much of a difference. So it's pretty evenly matched going into the fight. Stick, stick and move, move. stick and move. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. It helps the channel and it'll keep you in the loop with future videos. Tonight's fight clock is All right, you're getting into it now. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Oh, right there. Keep him. Killing him. Killing him. Literally, Barnes is. Yo, Barnes is on Queer Street. He's out. He's out. But the heart of a warrior for him to keep getting up in that moment. He's up, dude. He's up. Bronzolis versus Lozano. This is a hell of a fight. Bronzolis is fighting for a lot. I mean, he's trying to open up that diner in Queens. We know he, he wants to have the best coleslaw on the market. And, and he's fighting for a lot. I mean, you know, diners are important to a, a Greek man. We know boy, that. Man. You know, I was closer to him than anybody else. Shared stuff with him. I didn't share with anybody else. But now I just see the guy that I have to fight next week. You know, uh, I can't be friends with a guy that I'm about to crush. Randy's like backstabbing son of a I told you he wasn't trustworthy. Jabbing so he can go. That's the thing you don't want to get in is a big fire fight with the kid. Because if he catches you, it's going to hurt. You got meat hooks. Once you clean strike, step out of the way of power. And when you see an opening, get that bullet to the canvas. He's really good, man. Uh, so far, Frank Shamrock, in terms of his planning, I know he messed up in the Barnes fight and, and things of that nature, but he really does have a really intellectual approach to fighting. And it is a safety first, win at all costs mindset. I like it a lot. I was taking my afternoon nap, and I just hear just some yelling. Uh oh. You know what, man? That's what I get from f***ing with a fake person like you, man. And I walk outside. And Bronzulus and Lozano are just getting in each other's face. Too real. Bah, he's saying I'm too real. You're not real, you're fake, and you're a perpetrator. You're a perpetrator. You know what? I'm going to let you hit me to show you how weak you are. Bronzulus and Lozano are going <laughs> to murder each other. Oh, yeah, th th this is going gonna, gonna to be a barn burner. I'm going to hurt you bad. You ain't going to hurt me, dog. You a girl. You're a sensitive little boy. Shut the up. I'm not going to say anything else. So while we go fight in the cage, I'm going to make you cry. You're gonna cry leaving that king. Oh, King Mo, we remember King Mo. So
so much animosity, so much riding on this. Let's look at the stats. Age advantage to Lozano, but not by much, not in a meaningful way. Both the same height, coming in at virtually the same weight, and the reach, come on, you can throw that away. He's pumped, Bronzolis is coming out. They touch gloves, very shocked at that. Lozano has to respect the right hand, he has to keep switching directions, and he has to conserve his energy. Lowers level. Beautiful job. So Lozano does a great job of hitting the hips and managing to turn Bronzolis towards the cage. Circling the hips is always a good idea. It takes away from your opponent's ability to defensively work. Strips the legs. Oh, goes to the wrist too soon, though. So we pull the hips out, then reach for the wrist. That allows Bronzolis to escape his knee to the cage. He gains back exposure, so not, as, not all is lost in that exchange, but he's reaching over the shoulder, going to the armpit. No, there we go. Sits back. Excellent job. Underrated way of securing a takedown. Listen, getting the guy's hands to the mat's important. Man, lifting and dumping is important. But sometimes you can just pull him into empty space and you can save yourself a lot of energy. All right, so good good control of the back. He's a little bit low on the hips, but he's going to look to crawl up the body. Oh, Bronzola is doing a good job of switching directions and clearing the bottom hook. If you can see Lozano's left foot is no longer attached to Bronzola's left hip joint. That's allowing him to turn towards Lozano in this instance, as you see. Oh, and use that to follow back. Excellent job. Secures the second hook and throws in the strangle arm. But I'll tell you what, what I'm seeing. Oh, no, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Too premature. So as we can see, why would I say don't do that? Because you're giving up diagonal control, right? You always want to have control over your opponent's shoulder, run into his hip joint. And if you don't do that, your opponent can spin within your legs. And that, that's the danger. Also, notice that Lozano's head is directly behind Bronzolis's head. It's not a legitimate threat. You need proper head alignment for that to be something worth worrying about. Now he escapes to the back, but Lozano's doing a great job of securing the inside of the thigh. And he'll, he'll, he'll use that to obviously stop Bronzolis from getting to his back, but there's good exchanges and the strikes coming up from the standing position. This is great here. Good inside bicep control by Bronzolis. I mean, we cover a lot of this on my Patreon. The link is in the pinned comment below. And you can see here, we talk about this inside bicep ride all the time, being able to oscillate between inside bicep and wrist control. Um, it's, you need to get good at it. And as you can see here, it's a great tool to have. It gives you the ability to control the inside real estate against the cage which is what you're gonna to wanna to do, not just from an offensive perspective, but defense too, right? It's hard to strike a guy if you're controlling the inside of his body. Now back to the fight, we can see, you know, pretty standard work here from Bronzolis. He's, he keeps really good head positioning. He, he really swarms you with foot pressure. And in this instance, he's letting his hands go well. Lozano backing up with his hands down, his chin up. Lozano's a very athletic guy though. Oh, I don't like to see that. Okay, so what's happening here? All right, we're seeing strikes, right? That's cool. We can all look at that and say, oh, throw a knee, throw a punch. But what's really happening is Lozano is feeling pressured by Bronzolis. He's going, I'm not going to let this motherfucker pressure me, so I'm going to push him back, and I'm going to get him back. But that's not what he should be doing. He should be looking to land clean, accurate strikes to get the respect. Not a swarming method, because most of that missed. Now he's more tired, and he showed Bronzolis that he's getting overwhelmed, and he's getting anxious. Bronzolis uh, giving up the hips though, but he's a strong guy and he's doing a good job now of reaching through, punching with the right hand. He has to go back to really lifting up on the wizard. Ooh, back exposure was there for uh, Lozano. Lozano should lift the single if he can, but get stuck back up underneath Bronzolis' hips. And, uh, this could be dangerous position here. There's no elbows luckily that's going to save him from some pretty hard shots behind the ear. Park in here. This is not a good position. I don't like to see fighters with their heads stuck in between the legs because it really restricts your breathing. Not just that. I mean, you're going to drop down and hit an Iranian. That's one thing. But if you're not, you should probably peek your head out. Good job. Ranjol is turning him. And it, once again, being active. Being active in the clinch here. It's a tough round to score. I mean, if you look at it, you can say, oh, well, Ranjol is... Definitely pushed the pace and controlled the tempo. Uh, arguably landed the better strikes, but Lozano had the better positions, so it's tricky. Oh, nice right hook off the cage. That's a veteran move, punching in transition. Good jab by Bronzolis. Using that to back Lozano up and keep him on his heels, right? Very difficult to... To score for a guy that's going back in a straight line the whole time. Franzola is just swarming for the double underhook position and using great head positioning in close. Yes, I'd like to see him digging in the underhooks. I'd like to see him bend his knees a little more. Make it work a little bit easier. 
you know, when you're digging in those underhooks, you're gonna to wanna to bend your knees, right? It gives you the ability to get your shoulder underneath your opponent's armpit. There's a lot of love between these two guys still. You can see the way they look at each other after the round. There's a lot of respect. All right, second round. Let's see who can get the lead here, because, uh, man, that's a, that's, that's a pick em round, really. Oh, he bull rushes him in. He's a right uppercut for his efforts. Bronzola is going forward. Swarming throws a spinning back kick here. Body kick gets back exposure. Now, that goes back to what I said in the first round. You know, he throws a hook. I'm saying Lozano throws a hook as a desperation hook to get respect, to create distance and space, to slow down the swarming offense of Bronzolis. But in doing that, because it wasn't a timed punch, it wasn't on, at his own discretion, it was a force reaction, he actually exposed his back in that instance. Knees, knees, knees. Yeah. Hand control, baby. Tap hand control. Uh, tap that hip Chris, and punch. Just, I like knees to the hamstrings. I mean, Lozano doing a great job of separating the hands there. He wasn't able to turn off of it, but Lozano is no joke. Oh, bad call by Lozano. And listen, I'm a big fan of, of leg locks and, and attacking legs. And I think they have a place in MMA as well, but you don't want to be rolling for knee bars in this position. You know, it's just not, it's not ideal. It's a Hail Mary attack. I'd love to see him separate hands and turn towards Bronzolis. Let's square this fight up and turn him. That hip Remember too, front. guys, you can punch See, over yeah, the top yeah. of the head and whizzer as well. You don't have to there dig underhooks go. only. Right here, dig the right underhook, dig the right underhook, go, go, go. Underhook, underhook, underhook. He's using the elbow as a wedge, but it's being compressed into his chest, so he can't create the space he needs. There we go, underhook. Finally, we get some underhook action by Lozano. And, you know, just keep in mind as I give this, this sort of breakdown of the fight that all of what I'm saying is much easier in, 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 in theory than it is in actualization. So, you know, it's good for us to learn together on the channel and, and make funnies about people. But the truth is, this is incredibly difficult to do in reality. You want some hand fighting in that position. You got to stuff the head now. It's limp leg out. He limp legs out. Body shot. Body shot. Limp leg out. Any limp legs out. Good wizard and wrist control here. Turns. Bronzolis is a problem. Knee you know, to the body here would be beautiful if he could time it. Good knee to the body, excellent. Now push him against the cage. Excellent job. This is what we love to see. I love the clinch fighting, man. It's the best way to fight if you can sustain it. And, and if you're really passionate about fighting in those dirty positions. Oh, Lozano, Lozano fires three brutal shots. And I love when he uses the jab like that. I gotta say something. You know, Lozano has done a great job of shutting down Bronzolis' best weapon, which is the right hand. He did that through uh, a really strong jab, you know, and being confident in that jab, not flicking it, landing it. You know, you get hit with a few hard spinning heel kick by Lozano. No, oh, but listen, oh, hard overhand right. That's how you get respect. I, I like that. I like that. If I see what he just did, he did all that beautiful offensive work, and then he takes 25 steps back. And what that tells me is, you know what? He's fighting off of emotion. Oh, beautiful head work by Lozano. For all the criticism we can give him, he does things in there that are just beautiful to watch. Oh, nice body shot off the exit and blocks the kick with his wrist. It wasn't the perfect block, but to get the hand up there, that's just great. Timing by him. I'm telling you, he shut down that right hand so wonderfully. And that's what I'm most impressed with in this whole fight from Lozano. Besides his heart, right? Like right now, don't back up. Don't back up. See that hard jab? I'd love to see him shoot a hard takedown. He'll win this round with a hard takedown. Oh, beautiful work. Both guys going at it. Looks like Lozano's cut too. Oh, he runs him down. Let's go, Lozano runs him down. Lifts the single, gets the takedown, gains. Hey, listen, he got right back up, but you can't tell me. Oh, don't do that. He's gonna get back exposure. Damn, what are you doing there, Bronzoli? Excellent job, I'm giving Lozano that round. That's for me a definitive Lozano round. I mean, he showed so much heart. And you gotta score a guy who's aggressively wrestling who's gaining Good great stuff, right? exposure Good to the stuff. back and who also sure landed some clean shots really in there. You can see it here. Right. Bronzolis has a few marks in his face, so he's landing punches. Right we're going to a third. I can feel it. Judge to draw. 
We're going to a third round, ladies and gentlemen. Man, this is a this is brutal. This is a moment where you really don't want to be in there anymore. All the adrenaline, all the emotional has been gone for two and a half rounds, you know? Uh, you don't want to be in there anymore. Don't have to be hard, baby. Guys, come to center. Come to center. Come to center. Why? Come to center. Why? Let's go, gentlemen. Let's do this. Back it up. All right. No. Here we go. Let me do my job and fight. Hey, boxing, bro. What are you doing? Let's go. Hands up. All right, Chris. Chin down. You first Let's get behind it. You get, you get. Go. 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 See, I don't like that. See, Chris comes out. I like the, the relax element of it, but I don't like that he just waited there, right? He's exhausted, by the way. Man, come on. Oh, beautiful faint. Did you guys see that? That subtle faint? You could have been doing this for three rounds. Hindsight's 20 20, but man, incorporate faint. You're going to make your job easy. And, and what is Frank saying? Frank's saying, show me some faints. Frank Shamrock is a. Underrated coach from what I've seen on this show. It's he's a better coach than I thought. I thought he might be a little antiquated, a little old school, but no. Nah. He's a great strategist. He, he he had a little blunder with Barnes, I'll, I'll say that, but outside of that, he's been bulletproof with his with his judgment. Excellent jab by Lozano circling the cage. We gotta watch out for that right hand. That's the issue. You see him circling into it. And that's where you're gonna run victim. Good misdirection, switching directions and using the hook to turn. Bronzolis. Whoa. Bronzolis trying to find that right hand if he can. Oh, that chopping low kick is a thing of beauty. Now, what's wrong with Bronzolis' approach? He's all heart and he's all, all strategy, really. But if he can just take a few steps to his right, he'll make that cage a lot smaller for Lozano, making it harder for him to escape to his left. Called cutting off the cage. So he's following him a little bit. And it also put him out of the range for that right hand. Did you see that? How he whiffed the right hand as he was coming through. And it's because he's not stepping to his right, right, to close that gap. I really like Bronzolis' jab. He tucks his chin forehead forward and he really chucks that jab straight out. Excellent job. Catches the knee. The hollow of the knee and lands the backhand. Be beautiful though. Lozano gets right back up. Lozano ain't nobody. He's, he's wrestling hard. All hard here from both fighters. I mean, it's going to come down to who wants it more as cliche and corny as that sounds, right? We've all heard that added so many times, but that's what I'm seeing here. Who's going to dig a little bit deeper? Oh, that was a lovely hook and close. My thought is that the judges are looking at this and going, you know what, I think Bronzolis just showed a little bit more offensive effort. And that might be enough. You don't want to see a guy who's just reacting, reacting to the fight. You want to see a guy who's actually creating the conditions for the fight. Ring generalship, controlling where the fight takes place. And Bronzolis has had 100% cage control for most of the fight. They're working super hard, both guys, man. I mean, if you've never been in there, it, this is just torture. Like, this is, you know, and, and it, what it comes down to, a beautiful jab by Bronzolis, is neither guy has been able to make the other guy less athletic. You know, they've been fighting this sort of tit-for-tat style, and that's, that's never going to be an easy fight. Beautiful job with the chopping low kick again, man. Lozano with a clean right hand gets knocked off balance. That was a nice right hand by Bronzolis. I mean, this this is this is what this is what we love to see by both guys. Forty seconds to go, man. Let's go. Excellent wrestling on the single. Gets the trip. Gets the back exposure. Man, looking good for Lozano. Bronzolis really does. He, he gives so much focus on stripping the hands. He sometimes gives his back up. You don't want to fight the hands, but also wizard. Good job. He's, he's, a, he's a master at stripping those grips, though. I'll tell you that. And he gets his own bit of back exposure. The most grueling place to fight is against the cage, man. And these two guys are showing it. We could do it for 15 straight. Oh, he gets hit with the right hand there. But he's chucking leather. These guys are going at it to the bell. Good to see them embrace after the fight. You know, two guys that had respect for each other in the house. And, I mean, I'm sure they've gained a lot of respect for each other in the fight. 
Lozano has heart. He can go to his deathbed knowing that he did not break. The third overtime round, your winner by unanimous decision, Mike Bronzu. Wow. Wow. That's tough. Randy's happy. Bronzolis. The only reason you lost that because you're going backwards that last round. That's it. That's it. That's true. Stay tuned for episode nine of Bellator. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and make sure you check out my pinned comment below. It has all the information you need to know about what's going on in the Strangleverse. Strangle gang, I appreciate everybody. And if you want to watch more videos, as always, click one of the playlists that are about to pop up now.